Ireland is a mystical land, famous for its ghosts, legends and leprechauns. And because the Irish have a love of a good yarn, you don't have to stray too far, the nearest pub will do, to hear tales of spooks and hauntings. But tonight's story is different. An entire family claimed they were terrorised by a poltergeist. Now, can their accounts be dismissed as hysteria? Or if it's a hoax, how does one explain the testimony of the independent witnesses, their neighbours, and two investigative reporters from national newspapers. Come on, sister, hurry. I'm coming. We're nearly there. Come on, sister, hurry. We have to do it. God, what are we doing? Give her here now, sister. No, no. It has to be done. May the Lord forgive us. I know exactly what I had in this house, and to me it was pure terror. And all I want to do is leave this house and never come back to it. We were all scared. You know, I didn't even want to go to work. I said, well, my home is not the same. I mean, I know what happened. People can say it's a load of rubbish, a load of whatever. And I'd say to them, you didn't live through it. You'd never experienced anything like this, nor have I, but I did. What has gone on in this house has just been unimaginable. The sheer terror that we have gone through, the things that we've seen, you see them on films, you see them on poltergeist, they do not come to your door. Well, it started about eight months ago, with a terrible smell in the house. It was making us sick, the smell of urine. The pump from that kitchen is something frightful. Yeah, what's the bathroom? It's all over the place. It used to come right down the stairs. Even in the kitchen, the smell was there. I'd try dropping this in it anyway. Well, it's maybe I should get the council out to see if somebody can come out. Oh, that's a good idea, Michael. So I went to the Galway Corporation here. They came up and they checked the sewers out the back. I went through the motions of putting stuff around the t around the pipes and everything, but the smell was still there. But after about a month, the mysterious smell began to fade. What was that? God, I don't know. I'll go and have a look. Well, we were walking one night. Seth and Esther with, a, with just an unmerciful thump. So I jumped up out of the bed. I checked the baby's room. The first place I went was the baby's room. She was fast asleep. Came downstairs, checked the front room and the kitchen. And uh, there was nothing. So I just shoved it off and went back to bed. you not to buy that cheap stuff. What are you talking about? For goodness sake. That ceiling paint in Michael's room, it's flaking off all over the place. She called me, she said, Jackie, there's flakes Would after falling off the ceiling from the paint. So I went down to have a look at them and I picked up some in my hand and there were eggshells. This isn't paint. I said, well, Michael doesn't eat eggs, doesn't like eggs. I don't know. It looks like eggshells or something. The Fahis shrugged off the strange happenings. It was about 3.30 a.m. Myself and Michael were asleep in bed when this light entered the room. Michael! Michael, for God's sake, wake what? up! What? It just lit up the whole room. You could see everything very, very clearly. I was thought, this is it. This, something as terrible is going to happen to me now. It was like a constant pulse of light. 
something like 5,000 candle power. Really, really bright, brighter than daylight. What is it? I don't know. And I was absolutely terrified. I was under the covers, frightened for my life. I was absolutely petrified. News of the events at the house spread quickly, prompting a visit from a complete stranger. He'd come to tell the family a story about the land on which their house had been built. We invited him to tell his story to our camera. Saying that he feared there was a curse on the house, he declined, but he agreed for his account to be recorded on tape. 30 years ago, Cora Park wasn't here at all. It was an old farmhouse out the country with fields around it for miles. I was fairly friendly with the people that stayed in the old house. I got very friendly with them and they told me that they heard strange noises in the house. They told me that they, the clothes were pulled clean off the bed and yeah. left in the middle of the floor. Lord, it's for thee, blessed art thou, mourn, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, You've got the number if you need us. Yeah, yeah. Take care. God bless you. Bye. Come in. Sarah Louise! I just wanted to check, and all of a sudden the door came out in my face. So I came downstairs and I ran out to the neighbours crying and I told her what was happening. Well, Marta was terrified. She was bawling, crying. She was very, very bad, you know. And she asked me would I go out and check on the baby. And the door was closed. Oh, please let it be all right, Bridge. I went in and checked on the baby. She was fine, you know. Thanks be to God. When Michael and Mary came home that night, Martha told them what had happened. I was terrified. <coughs> Wasn't I, Sarah Louise? But Martha refused to come into the house. She was adamant, no way. She was too scared. But you're all right now. Yeah. But I need some things for Sarah Louise. Oh. There's a bag near the banister. I'll go and get them. Better go with her. Okay. There was no way she was entering back in that house. So myself and Mike braved it and I went in, but no way would Martha. We came back into the house and we were very very frightened going in, like, cause we had to grab the baby's clothes and... That's when all hell broke loose. And then we heard a big thump, and we both ran in. The coffee table was upturned. So we said, that's it, we have to get out of here. We can't stay here tonight. Let's stay here. Let's, let's get out. Oh, Michael, the lights! It was just pure terror. I mean, I've never been so afraid in my whole life. This was probably the worst thing that ever happened driving away and we look back and there was this big black shadow on the house as it didn't look like our house. In the panic, the Pahi's dog Bundy was left in the back garden. Breege Lee's son Patrick was sent to feed him. So my father gave me the food and uh, I hopped over the back wall and I fed the dog. And when I was feeding the dog, the light just started flicking on and off. I, I thought it was a lamp at first, but it was too bright to be a lamp because it lit up the whole kitchen. And uh, I, was, I was just, I was so scared like when I seen it. I kind of stood back. I just got so scared, I nearly wet myself. I just, I said, I'm getting out of here quick. I told my parents then what I'd seen. The light was flicking on and off, and uh, they couldn't believe it. Blinking away, he said they were. I turned them off, I know I did. Two days later, the Fahi family returned to Corrib Park to find their home of 25 years in a state of devastation. Oh, Jackie, I'm not going to spend another night here. Now, nah, come on, girl, you'll be all right. Do you want me to call in the church? No, no, we don't want to go bothering the priest. Well, things got so bad, we didn't actually sleep here any night. We went to Breach Lee's next door, we slept on the floor, we huddled together, 
we're more comfortable out there than we were in here. No longer able to sleep in their own home, the Fahis decided it was time to seek help. I don't think this is a good idea at all. Shh. It'll drive the thing more wild, I'm telling you. Oh, OK, I'll, I'll do that. What did he say? Well, your man says I need more proof before they put it in the paper. One night, my dad and I decided to just tape the noises, just get some proof that we weren't actually hearing this in our minds, like... There's no tape in the machine. She told us not to mess with it. It started again. Well, I felt like to think they didn't want us to record it. But we panicked, so we all ran downstairs. We got to the bottom of the stairs. And next thing we heard this baby cry. I was the only one who actually couldn't hear anything. I didn't hear it. I wanted to hear this for myself. I actually realised it was a porcelain jug who was past me ah! and hit Sarah Louise's room. I was terrified, I was scared, I was crying. It was, it was total panic. Determined to return to their home, the Fahi family decided it's time to seek help from the church. The Fahi family had been forced to leave their Galway home, believing it was possessed by a poltergeist which had upturned furniture, thrown objects around and made pictures fly off the walls. Desperate for help, Jackie Fahi confided in a priest. Would the family's faith in the church bring peace back into their lives? It's yourself, Father. Come in, come in. Thanks for coming, Father. If you get the family together, we'll see what we can do. Michael, Esther, come on, lads. We knew that the priest was going to come to say mass in the house. We felt hopeful that everything would be better. Now, if we all stay calm and pray to God. Our Father, who art in heaven. We had a private mass here for the family only. Here in this room, the front room. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. But in the middle of the mass, I could hear a baby crying. As it is in Father. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. The priest was literally getting louder. He was saying the prayers louder. And I think myself he heard the child crying, but he didn't want to, to say he did. And forgive us our trespasses, Keep as going. we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us and not lead us into not temptation, temptation, but deliver, but deliver us from evil. From evil. From evil. Amen. Amen. After the mass was said, the Fahi family believed their nightmare would at last be over. By now, news of the poltergeist activity had reached reporters in Dublin. Um, I was working on another story that day, but just about three o'clock in the afternoon, my editor said to me, Aideen, can you get down to Galway immediately, basically, and stay the night in a haunted house? Oh, hello. Aideen Sheen from the Evening Herald. Oh, they're expecting you. Thanks a lot. They said, see if anything happens there. And I said, I can't imagine that anything will. This is probably a stunt to try and get a better council house or something like that. I mean, we were all very sceptical. Mr. and Mrs. Fahey said that they didn't want to sleep in the house. I said, I'll stay in, in the house with Michael and his girlfriend. I thought that they seemed a genuinely pleasant family. They were very happy to have me there. They said, we'd like someone to be here so that it's not just us saying this has happened. Do you mind if I sit up here? Uh, no, go ahead. It's a bit cold, isn't it? They kept feeling these weird chills, but I was certain that it was just the night getting cold. So I was sitting in the kitchen, just typing up a story that was fairly sceptical about anything happening. I'll just knock up something for the editor and see what happens. Well, we'll wait a bit and keep you company. So do you think we'll get in the papers? It's up to the editor. Did you hear that? It's coming from the living room.
Well, I just heard this massive crash and I just leapt to my feet and Michael and myself and his girlfriend, we raced back into the room because I just couldn't imagine what had happened. It sounded as if the roof had fallen in or something. And uh, we raced in and it just was unbelievable. <laughs> now do you believe us? What we saw was a huge china dog, which you couldn't help but noticing before that had been sitting on the hearth. Um, it had smashed into smithereens. It was just all over the place. Um, and the television had been, which was beside where the dog had been sitting, was pushed backwards on its table. And there were pictures that had been upended on top of it. Um, there was a kind of layer of soot on top of the television. And there was a picture above the television that was now crooked and it had been straight before. So at this stage, I, I was getting kind of spooked. And I mean, I taste it out. I'm completely atheistic and I've no, I've, I've never had any sort of fear of paranormal things or any belief in them whatsoever. I went in and I was astounded by it and I was just desperately looking to try and find some kind of physical explanation and I couldn't. After Aideen Sheehan's story appeared, investigative journalist Declan White joined high-profile psychic Sandra Ramdani at the Fahis' home. Hello, Would sorry. Sandra's renowned psychic skills finally rid them of their persistent and unwelcome visitor? In 90% of the cases I'm called out to, there's absolutely no form of paranormal activity involved. Uh, what we have sometimes is overactive imagination, knocking pipes in the house or other factors explaining, creaking floorboards maybe, um, to explain the disturbance that's going on. I really had read quite a lot about the case in all of the newspapers and it appeared to me that here was a family living in terror who'd been put out of their home by a spirit. I thought the least I could do was go and try to help. I'd just like to do a check on the house first. Okay. Being a hard-nosed reporter, you have to go now and check it all out. Were the people looking for a new council house? Is there some other story here behind it? Are they genuine? So we were there for two days. I felt they were genuine, they were scared, they were petrified, they couldn't sleep. You could see it in their eyes, there was a bit of madness going on. This was a great story. This splashed in all the national newspapers. It was the main uh, lead on uh, TV news. It went around in all the uh, radio programmes. Everybody in Ireland was talking about it and I wanted to be there for the scoop. When I entered the house, I was immediately aware that there was a spirit presence. I felt that this was a spirit who hadn't moved on properly and that the spirit and the whole house, in fact, needed healing. Michael, Mary, Martha and Declan agreed to join Sandra in a seance. And uh, anybody who would like to come in? You're welcome to come in now. Let's all gather round, Martha. Link hands. Concentrate all our healing energies on Martha and send her warm, positive thoughts. Relax. Breathe in and out. Slowly. I can see a spirit. Tiny newborn baby wrapped in a bundle. There are two people with it, young people. They're wearing black. They're running, running. They feel shamed. They must hide their terrible secret. Give her here now, sister. No, he's taking the baby. He's taking his life. May the Lord forgive us. When I tuned into the spirit, the impression I got was this was a very young baby, a newborn infant maybe, that had been murdered at birth. I felt the mother was a nun and that the father was a priest. And this child had been smothered and buried underneath what appeared to be an old farmhouse. We must focus all our healing energies on that little baby and help to release the spirit from 
It's eternal pain. I saw the baby being actually lifted up. It was in white clothing. It was glowing golden light. And it lifted up and went up into the light above my head. It was like a baby rising with a smile on his face. I thought, wow. After that, it seemed the vibration in the place seemed to turn to happiness. Much, much quieter, much, much calmer. At that moment then, I knew it had left our house, it was gone. I do believe that they, that there was something strange going on in the house. Um, I can't explain it and I, um, I would look for any sort of physical explanation, but I haven't been able to think of one and I've thought about it quite a lot since. But there was definitely something that was, you know, not, like nothing I've ever seen before anyway. Um, and they genuinely were disturbed by it. I've no doubt about that, that it wasn't a, a hoax. The house now is it's comfortable, it's warm. It's, there's just happy vibes everywhere in the house. We felt really happy. And we knew this thing had gone. I can sleep in my bed again, I can sit down and watch television. People are smiling, you can see it in their faces, you can see it in their eyes. The tenseness has left. We could leave Sarah Louise and she could have a peaceful sleep. Being a reporter, I can only report what actually happened, the feelings of what happened. And in that, genuinely, something paranormal, something beyond our ordinary lives happened that day and brought happiness into a house that was full of sadness. Since that day, the Fahis have moved back to their home, where they now live in peace and things have returned to normal. So, did Sandra really rid their home of a spirit trapped between two worlds? The Fahis certainly think so. And perhaps in the end, that's all that counts. Good night.